Uh, well, uh, this is, I think, one of the particular situations where you would see our reports where we say possibility of inflammatory slash infective arthropathy may be considered, comma, the former being more likely. Please correlate with the markers. You would see our reports like this. One place where there is an uncertainty, and we try to convey that uncertainty as best as possible and try to guide you as to what it could be more likely. There are certain times when things are clear, but many are times when it is not. So it's a combination of the history of the patient, monoarticular, polyarticular, the other findings, ESR, CRP, the inflammatory markers, are they factor positive or not, imaging, all of these put together. It's not one thing that can help us lead to a diagnosis. So when we talk of infective, we are mainly talking of tuberculous or pyogenic. Inflammatory, we are mainly talking of rheumatoid arthritis and seronegative arthritis. I mean, these are the general, obviously there are many more. You have fungal, you have mother infection, you have other inflammatory gout and all, but we'll just look at these. Radiographs, by the time the changes are evident on radiograph, it's little later in the disease. So by that time, many a times things are more clear. Patient already, know, you know that there is polyarticular findings, patient has uh, other history. So this is a typical rheumatoid arthritis, while this is tuberculosis. But I'll concentrate more on MR, because that is where we do early imaging. And that is where the differentiation is many a times a problem. Pyogenic infection is usually not a problem. One, the history is uh, more clear. You have joint effusion, synovitis, you have marrow edema, and you have periarticular soft tissue edema, which you will not see with transient synovitis. And you'll not see the marrow edema also. So that is okay. The main problem which happens is differentiating tuberculous arthritis from rheumatoid arthritis. There is this article which very clearly talks about these differences. When the synovial thickening is thin and smooth, it's more likely tuberculous. In rheumatoid arthritis or in inflammatory, it's uneven, thick, irregular. Larger bone erosions, more marrow edema are seen with tuberculous arthritis. And if you have extra articular cystic masses, abscesses, fluid collections, that makes our life much more easy, it's tuberculous. But the lesions don't read the textbooks or articles. So exact differentiation like this, we see many a times, but not all the time, and the uncertainty still remains. Examples, here you have rheumatoid arthritis, there is synovitis. Do I need to give contrast for this? Most of the times, no. Fluid looks much more bright, while synovial thickening, as you can see, shows intermediate signal intensity. So we can make out synovial thickening without contrast also. You have these small bone erosions peripherally, not that much of marrow edema relatively. When you have multi-compartment involvement, all the extensor tendons, you have tenosynovitis, synovial thickening. Again, this is fluid, and this intermediate is synovial thickening, as well as intercarpal joints. This, you have to think of inflammatory, multi-compartment. These kind of rice bodies, what you call, may be seen both with tuberculosis and inflammatory that may not always help to differentiate. They are different from synovial osteochondromatosis, where they are different size, but they may not always help us between TB and RA. Diffuse marrow edema, synovitis, but then you see all these areas of fusion, and also the patient has got polyarticular involvement, RA. Look at the synovial thickening. It's thick, irregular. That is more with inflammatory arthritis. When you see enthesitis like this, and when you have marrow edema in very odd locations, patchy marrow edema, that would fit into seronegative spondyloarthropathy. Again, enthesitis like this tells you this is seronegative spondyloarthropathy. Compare that with TB. Look at the synovium. It is smooth and thinner as compared to the RA that we saw. The bone involvement is larger. The erosions are larger, and they show peripheral enhancement and you have these extra articular abscesses. So this is TB. Again, TB, thinner, smoother enhancement, larger bone involvement, which on T1 can have a peripheral, slightly hyperintense rim. As against that, look at rheumatoid arthritis, 
more thick irregular synovial enhancement, bone involvement relatively lesser, the erosions are smaller, no extra articular soft tissue component. This is a Baker's cyst, so that you would see even with rheumatoid arthritis. Sacroiliitis, marrow edema, more on the iliac side, no soft tissue component. That is inflammatory. Because we are all taught during our residency, unilateral sacroiliitis is TB unless proven otherwise. That's true with x-rays, but not with MR. Because MR, you pick up unilateral sacroiliitis in the very early stage, even when it is ankylosing spondylitis. So how do we differentiate? When you see a soft tissue component, you have marrow edema kind of equal on both sides, not more on iliac side. And here you have an associated soft tissue component that is infection. But brucellosis, I don't see too many of them in our practice, but my colleagues in Pune and Nasik tell me that they see that may not have soft tissue component. We need to keep that in mind. At times, things get confusing. This was a person who came from US, polyarticular involvement, superior tibiofibular joint, patella, foot, had been treated for pyogenic infection and inflammatory, and finally biopsy turned out to be tuberculous. So in India, tuberculosis can be extensive, can be polyarticular. Large abscess like this, you know it is tuberculosis. Then you don't have to worry that much. Joint space, uniform narrowing. There is synovitis, lot of marrow edema, but there is relatively early joint space narrowing and no large erosions. This was RA. This patient came with this edema here around the right atlantoaxial joint. He came with neck pain. An earlier MR had been called as TB. He had been put on AKT. We did the follow-up because he was not improving. But you can see this marrow edema here. This time, we also did screening of the spine. And what we can see is facet edema. You can see costo vertebral junction edema. You can see this corner marrow imaging. So that turned out to be ankylosing spondylitis. While this is TB in the same location, but now you can see this soft tissue component. So always, if you don't have soft tissue component, don't label it as TB. Think of inflammatory. Having said that, the last case that I want to show, it can still be confusing. This patient came with hip pain. X-ray, somebody saw some cystic area and did CT. CT, they saw this one lesion. They saw this other lesion, thought it is osteoid osteoma. But the clinical history was not fitting into osteoid osteoma. He was sent for MR. We did MR, and what we could see is extensive synovial thickening. This is not thin and smooth, but there is significant synovial thickening, and this lesion, what we saw on CT. Ultrasound-guided biopsy turned out tuberculosis. So to diagnose tuberculosis, one must consider the possibility. Anything can be tuberculosis at times. We need to keep it in mind if other things are not fitting in. Only imaging may not help diagnosis. We have to put everything together. And the role of radiologist would be to consider the disease and guide the further management. There are times when we can be sure what it is, and there are times when we are not sure, and we need to convey that degree of uncertainty so that the further evaluation can be done accordingly. Thank you.